Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum. I'm here today at the Royal Armouries, the National Firearms Center in Leeds, England, courtesy of Ares Armament Research Services. Today I had the chance to take a look at one of the new production Bruger & Tomet VP9 pistols, which is sort of a copy of the Wellrod 9mm. I figured this would be a pretty cool opportunity to take a look at the two side by side, and let's see how close of a copy it really is. So B&T sells these as a cool set in its own very nice little leather case. We open that up, and a whole smorgasbord of VP9 bits. So we have the gun itself here, of course. Then you have a spare suppressor, various cleaning tools, second spare magazine. These are in 9x19, uh, cleaning brushes. This is the tool for disassembling the suppressor. We'll take a look at that in a moment. We have a whole a couple sets of extra rubber baffles. This is for attaching a light or other accessory to the weapon. So this ring mount goes around the suppressor, tightens down, and then you have a little bit of Picatinny rail for attaching whatever veterinary sort of tools you might need. Now let's take a look at the VP9 compared to the Wellrod Mark I. So this, a little bit counterintuitively, the Mark I was actually the later production Wellrod after the Mark II. It is in 9x19 Parabellum, where the majority of the Wellrods were in 32, but Bruger and Tomet has decided to use 9x19, so we'll compare these two. What really struck me when I started looking at these is that the, the Bruger and Tomet gun is a really, really close um, copy of the Wellrod. For example, the trigger mechanism. If we look up close at the original Wellrod, you can see that there's a grip safety here that blocks this trigger bar, and the trigger really just is this long bar held in place by these two screwed in place side plates, and it pushes back until it trips a sear. The gun's currently not cocked, so it's not dry firing, but that's all that the trigger does. And if we look at the new Bruger and Tomet version, it's the exact same thing, even down to the same little side plates. Grip safety, and that trigger is just a long bar with a spring-loaded return right there in the middle, just like the original Wellrod. Now on the original Wellrod, the magazine comprised the grip. Um, I believe these were made from Colt 38 Super magazines, with this big hard rubber um, coating added to the bottom to make it a little bit more grippy and prevent gunk from getting in the bottom of the magazine. But then there's just a modicum of a magazine well here, and on the 9mm guns there's a magazine catch right at the, the front of the trigger guard. On the original 32s the magazine catch was attached to the magazine on the back right here. Bruger and Tomet has changed the style of magazine catch, and they've made it a much more modern type, but we have this, this button here as the magazine release, but they've pretty much done the same thing. They have a standard 9mm single stack pistol magazine inside a contoured plastic grip. Now they did make this plastic grip uh, much more uh, hand-shaped than the original. And that's, that's an improvement. You get a good easy two fingers on this and your pinky underneath the magazine. The original well rods tend to have a very narrow grip, um, especially for the, the bulk of the rest of the gun, and they're kind of awkward to handle. The grip safety remains the same on the, the Bruger and Tomet as it was on the original well rod. If we take a look at the actions, these are both rotating bolt manually operated pistols. And on both of them you rotate the bolt 90 degrees counterclockwise, you can then open it, that ejects the empty case, you can then close the bolt. There are two locking lugs here at the back. Close the bolt, and when you close it you're compressing the firing pin spring, and essentially cocking it. Same goes with the VP9. It has the, the uh, index mark is much more clearly defined here, but you rotate 90 degrees, pull the bolt open. Oh, I should say the one difference here is on the Bruger and Tomic gun, once you've fired it you actually have to have the grip safety depressed in order to open the bolt. But that's the only real difference I can see. We still have our two locking lugs on the back of the bolt, just like that. And to load a cartridge you just push the bolt in, rotate back up into alignment, and it's ready to fire. One of the other interesting elements to the Wellrod suppressor was that it actually used solid rubber baffles as well as metal baffles, 
or I should say solid rubber wipes, as well as metal baffles. And those wipes would wear out over just the first handful of cartridges, um, because you would be shooting, literally shooting brand new holes through those wipes. Now they did make um, the gun substantially quieter for those first few rounds, and given the well rod's purpose as basically an assassination weapon, um, that style of suppressor was just fine. It wasn't something you were expected to put a lot of volume of ammunition through. Well, if we take a look at the Bruger and Tomet suppressor, we have this big uh, hex pattern at the front, and it comes with a hex-shaped tool, which allows me to just unscrew the cap. And lo and behold, what do we find but rubber wipes. Now it's not just rubber wipes. We do have a nice stack there. So this is the front half of the suppressor, and it is going to alternate metal baffles and rubber wipes. The exact layout for these is specified in the manual so that you don't get it all messed up, like I probably just did. There we go. So this stack is of course removable, as you can see, and the, the rubber baffles are replaceable, and that's what you have a bunch of spares of in the general suppressor case. So we have this attachment accessory for a rail here for all of your veterinary accessories, the, uh, the tactical hoof pick, the, um, the infrared tick detector, the laser guided syringe alignment indicator, possibly the, uh, the tactical uh, pill applicator, really anything that you need to attach to your veterinary pistol. I don't know that this qualifies so much as a veterinary pistol in the traditional sense, but perhaps that's not exactly the target market that Bruger and Tomet had in mind when they designed this. Regardless, it's a gorgeous case, it's a very cool pistol, and it absolutely has some real improvements over the original well rod. Much handier, much more reliable, uh, or, or more reliably handling, I should say, uh, having not actually fired it yet. Anyway. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed getting a chance to compare these two. If you're interested in these, make sure to check out the Ares blog post that accompanies this video, where you'll find high resolution pictures of the entire BNT set, as well as the 9mm well rod. And if you're interested in small arms research on your own, definitely get in touch with the NFC here at the Royal Armouries. Their collection is not available to the general public, but it is available by appointment. Thanks for watching.